it's Friday for me. So, uh, just to recap, we uh, yesterday or the first part of this video, we did the did the uh, pre hung door, thirty inch pre hung door, and that's uh, that turned out really well given it's uh, pre hung. And so, so today we are going to be doing a custom door jam. We're building one from scratch. So um, essentially what that is, is instead of this being a split jam here, that's what this is called, where your other pieces of trim slide into it, um, when you build a door jam from scratch, the, you build the jam, which is what the hinge is attached to, as you can see. You build all of that first, and it's one piece. So it's gonna it's gonna extend from finish wall to finish wall. Uh, and then what you do is you go ahead, you put your hinges on, you get the door, uh, or you get it adjusted so it's exactly plumb and square, and. Um, then you get your door shutting properly and you put the uh, stop material, this material right here, on legs. Um, it is a little more work and it uh, does require some more tools that most people, well, some people might not have. So you're gonna, you're gonna definitely gonna wanna have a air nailer for it. Um, you're also gonna need a table saw. This is a rigid, just a portable table saw. Um, I got it set up in the shop so that it, uh, I have a runoff table. And don't mind the shop. We're doing some reorganizing and expanding because where I built that room, I had some storage for the shop. So right now it's a, it's kind of a disaster, but it'll get there. Um, anyway, got to have a table saw. We're going to be using one by six finger jointed pine. So I got some one by six. It's already primed, so it's ready for paint. Um, and we need to use the table saw because we're going to have to rip these down. So these are going to be too wide. Um, so we're going to have to rip a portion of this off using the table saw. Um, you're going to want to have a miter box or um, chop saw, they're, they're called. Um, this one slides, so you can either just chop or this one slides. Um, so. And then we're going to need our nice usual tools that we got for, uh, that we use for the pre-hung door. Um, level, uh, tape measure, just basic stuff like that. So. Let me uh, let me get set up here. I'm gonna put you guys on the tripod, and um, this is the opening we're gonna be installing the door in. And when I'm figuring this, since I don't have drywall on this side of the wall yet, um, I'm gonna build the jam so that taking into account that half inch for the drywall. So um, this is where we're gonna be putting it in and um, hopefully get this room closed off so that the heater I put in works because it's downright chilly right now. <laughs> I mean, you can see we got, we're getting some snow and freezing rain and just generally miserable weather. So we, which is why this giant pile of garbage and debris is still here because I am I'm just not feeling walking up and down icy steps with debris and throw it in my dump truck but um, let me get set up all right guys so the first step of this process is is we need to rip down or cut those one by sixes for our door jam down to the proper width um, 
and we figure that out by measuring the thickness of the wall. So that's going to be the thickness from finished surface to finished surface. So we have our two by four wall, which is three and a half inches thick, and then we have one sheet of half inch sheetrock on each side of the wall. So the thickness of our the total thickness of our door jam is then going to be four and a half inches. So we need to take those one by sixes and cut them down using the table saw here. And I apologize if this is a little, a little wobbly. I'm trying to use a new mount and uh, I'm not super thrilled with it, but it's okay, it'll do the job. So we need to rip these down using the table saw to uh, four and a half inches. So that way when we attach our door jam up there, um, it's not protruding out, so that way our trim will sit flat to, or our door casing will sit flat to our finished wall. So, I have this set up, and it's always a good idea. You can use the scale that's on your, your fence, which is this piece right here, where my, my hand is. That's the fence. That's what, that's what our, our finished wood's going to ride up against. But it's always a good idea just to double check and measure. So, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but here. I'm showing exactly four and a half inches. So when I'm measuring this, I'm measuring from the face of the fence to the right hand side of the teeth right here and I, I have the uh, the safety key pulled on, on the table saw so it's not going to uh, turn on. You always want to be safe when you do this. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to lock our fence in. So now we're, we're locked in, the fence isn't going to move. And um, now I'm going to rip down three pieces of the two by six, or two by six, one by six, down to four and a half inches. So we need the three pieces because we're gonna have one 80 inch piece on either side, and then we have a 30 inch piece that's gonna go across the top. So that's why you need to rip down three, and it's always a good idea to rip them all at the same time. Um, that way you know it is, uh, they're all gonna be exactly Exactly the same. So, I'll grab one of these. And we're going to fire the saw up and uh, cut some one bys. When you, oh, when you set how high to have the blade up, you want to have the teeth so they just barely clear the top of your piece of uh, piece of wood. There's like a little channel way um, in the teeth. Basically, you want to have the teeth up so that that channel way is exposed. But you don't want to have too much of the blade exposed because it causes dragging and causes kickbacks and things of that nature. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this. And again, I apologize if it's a little wobbly. Um, I'll, I'm going to try and find a better mount next time, so...
we got our three boards so. cut. All three of them are exactly the same width. So now we are going to go ahead and take some measurements as far as height and uh, get these uh, get these cut uh, for height and for width after we measure our door, which is right here. Um, you want to verify exactly what the measurement is for this. And when you measure this, when you're laying out for your door jam, whatever the total width, on, let me see if I can, no, well, let me zoom in. Um, whatever the total width is on your door, you want to add a quarter inch at minimum. Um, you add it like a quarter to three-eighths of an inch um, to the width and that's what you want to set your door jam at because that will allow for the door closing since this is a square edge and the door works on an arc this inside edge has a tendency to rub on the door jam if you you make your door jam too tight so you want to allow a little bit of space about an eighth of an inch space on this side eighth of an inch to three sixteenths on that side and then another eighth of an inch to three sixteenths on your hinge side just for clearance um, and the same goes for up top but um, we will get into that this is a standard door um, there's nothing special about this one it's just a regular old 30 inch door so your standard door standard 30 inch door is going to be 30 inches wide we're going to verify that Okay, so now we're all set up. I got my uh, 16 gauge air nailer. Looks like this. Um, we got our board up there. We got our header piece up. So we also have our shims. And here's a little tip for you to help you help you set, keep this thing from getting cock crooked when you're putting nails in it. If you take your shim. You got a fat end and a skinny end. You want to do, put two of them together with one facing one direction, one facing the other. And that way you can adjust the height and it remains flat. So when you nail it together, it's not going to want to pull your header. and you just want to snug it just snug it up a little bit just like that and we're going to put one nail in one nail until we do our final adjustment so, one and I do the same thing on the other side here Now we can start fitting our side pieces. And we're going to double check here real quick. Now we've got to do our side pieces here. Remember, we had a 30 inch door. And we're almost exactly 32 wide, 32 and an eighth. So I know that each one of these is going to be about a quarter inch spaced off of the, the sides here. So let's see here. So that fits nice. Now we 
got our piece up here, our side, to our jam. So before we even do anything, we're going to throw one nail in, and I'll just kind of hold it in place. So now, we can adjust this out and forward and back to whatever we need. Now I'm going to come out about a quarter we need about a quarter on each side. So we get our pry bar in there. And we pull it out just a little. Just like that. You should be able to see that slight gap I put in there. Yep. Get you a little closer. So we came out about a quarter inch. just a touch here and we're also going to pin the bottom so down there yeah, let's see if you can see it yeah we're going to do the same thing down here at the bottom After I run into the camera, now we're going to check if the plug. And it looks like our top could stand to come out a little bit. So we'll find our hammer and just tap on the shim. Making your adjustments until your door jam is plumb. So when your door is done, or your door jam is done, it should look something like that. So nice tight seams, All right. everything's nice and secure. Um, I went ahead and put the other side on here. It really only required minimal shimming because we took our time and made sure the roughing opening was was done correctly and was was plumb so um those just took a couple few little shims here and there but for the most part it's attached almost directly to the the framing 
So they're all nice and smooth across the front here. And on the back, this is that little overhang right here. That'll be taken up by our sheetrock that we put on this side of the wall when we uh, when we do our bathroom in here. So that'll be another series I'm going to be doing, so showing how to install a bathroom. Um, to give you a little preview of that, um, where that frame wall ends right there, um, we're going to build a wall straight across, um, which will have a door that'll be on this side. Um, where are these pipes? currently are that's my main drain stack coming down that is where the vanity is going to be it's already roughed in for you can see the pipe right here so that'll be where the vanity is at um, the toilet is going to go somewhere in this area right in here um, it's underneath all of this there it is right there. Um, so that's where the toilet's going to go um, I'm thinking about putting a small linen closet right in this area right here um, just for towels and toiletries and things like that so probably that is the direction this door is going to open it's going to open into the closet door like like so um, because we have a three foot by three foot um, shower that's going to go in here and that's all going to be custom built um, it's going to have a custom pan, shower pan, all custom tile work throughout. And um, I'll be doing a, a whole series just on tile work. Um, doing ceramic tile the proper way. Um, floor is going to come up. That's going to get all tile. But um, yeah, so that's uh, that's the plans for this room. But our door, our door jam is completely constructed now. So the next step in this process is laying out where we're gonna put our hinges um, and uh, laying them out both on the door jam here on this side because it's gonna be a left hand end swing. So it's gonna swing into the room and to the left. So left hand end swing and um, we need to lay our hinges out on the jam and then take those corresponding measurements and transpose those onto the door so that we can get um everything lined up and what we're shooting for is a similar reveal at the top here so we're looking for about an eighth of an inch at the top and um we're gonna have about a half of an inch at the bottom so that's that's at least the game plan so let me go ahead and get set up for that here's another shot of the first side we did with the shims in there and i've nailed it at every every spot we put shims i put nails so that'll ensure that this stays good and um secure um along with this side um i'm so i'm gonna get set up and get my jigs set up and uh, bring the door in here and take some preliminary measurements and uh bring you guys back when i'm all set up Okay, so for this next part, these are the tools you're going to need. Well, these are the tools that I'm going to use that make it a little bit easier. Um, you can do all of this with nothing more than the hinges you're going to use, uh, a pencil and, some, and a chisel. Um, but it's probably going to be much, much more difficult and take you a lot longer. Um, I have a jig. <laughs> A router jig. Um, it, I think it costs maybe 40 bucks. And it's got all the different templates for the different size hinges and different sized uh, latches and striker plates. And it all comes in one big kit um, that works with uh, both entry doors, which are going to be an inch and three quarter thick. And, um, and, uh, regular uh, inch and three-eighths doors, which are going to be your interior doors. But uh, So we got our kit, we got our, our jig kit, we got our quarter-inch collet router with the bit that comes in the kit. 
Um, we got our jig for doing um, the door handle. So this will slide right onto the door, like so. And it's got the pre preset sizes for the for the door handle, so that way you bore your holes correctly and uh, use hole saws for that. This is for our latch, for our mortise, for our, uh, for the latch. Take this, you put it on the door, smack it with a hammer, and it cuts a little indentation in there. We have our little drill adapter guide thing here. Um, it's spring-loaded, so it's got this center punch and a drill bit inside. So you put this in your drill, this on your door, it self centers like so. And then you just press down and it drills the hole, pre drills the hole for your screws. And we got some four inch hinges. Now, we don't need to use four inch hinges. That's way overkill for this door. But that's what I have in the shop right now. So that's what I'm going to use. And these are also brass. And, uh, I want to go with um, brush nickel hardware and hinges so um, for the time being we'll go ahead and put these on and I'll just change them out later and of course uh, screws now when you buy the hinges when you buy hinges they'll come with screws um, I just oh excuse me happen to have a, I buy them in bulk so we're gonna need that for that's all the materials and kind of the tools we're going to use and of course the tape measure um, and then we got our door which is same exact style door as um, the pre-hung um, only this one hasn't been drilled yet for a door handle so this one you can you can buy them like this and decide whether or not you want to do a left hand end swing or right hand end swing um, because that way you just drill your hole for your door handle and, and uh, mortise your hinges in. And so we're going to do that. And then uh, we're going to get set up over here. And uh, I will show you how to put the hinges on. Now, I'd like to mimic where these hinges are. I believe they're, they're spaced uh, evenly in thirds throughout so I will probably go ahead and measure from the top corner to the top edge of these hinges here and then go ahead and transfer those measurements over to our other door over here so that way it's uh, since they're both in the same room it'll be uh, it'll have a little continuity to it and uh, carry throughout but um, I'll show you how to lay out for that and how to set up the jig. And uh, we'll go ahead and route those um, using the router. And I'll show you how to set the depth on that. It's, it's not difficult at all. And none of those tools over there are, are super expensive. So um, if you did want to buy them, you know, they're, they're relatively inexpensive. I think the router was about a hundred bucks and there's probably another hundred dollars worth of jigs here. So, but so not not too terrible, not not outrageously expensive. But um, you know, having a router around, especially if you're into DIY projects, um, it's it's a worthwhile investment. Um, and this, these are inexpensive uh, little quarter inch ones. I got a couple more over there, some half inch ones, and all kinds of stuff. So. Let me uh, go ahead and uh, get you set back up on the tripod over here and change the battery out because that's about to die again. And we'll go ahead and start laying out for our door hinges. All right, so to lay out for these hinges, I am going to take measurements. And I'm transposing them from the other door. So our top one is eight and a quarter to the top of the hinge. So we're gonna do mark it eight and a quarter. Then we got 
38 and a quarter. So what I'm going to do So that line now marks the top of our hinges. So what we want to do, since we're using a four inch hinge, we're going to put another mark two inches down to mark the center of our hinge that's the way that jig is set up. It's set up to uh, work off the center. So, now that we've got our layout lines, we've got to get our jig and attach our jig to the wall. So, our jig, let me, hear, let me make sure you guys can see this. It's got this little notch right here. So, we line up the center of that lower line that we put on on the door jam there with this center line and that's going to center our hinge in there and since we're using a four inch hinge that should put the top of our hinge right at that first line and this gets just just gets attached with um, um, just some drywall screws and the holes that it makes in the door jam are going to get patched or covered up anyhow so um, it's not going to hurt anything at all they're, they're very easy to patch. So, we're going to put. And we line that up just like that. And then we take. And we attach our jig. And what I'll do is I'll. Give you guys an opportunity to see this. So, see how we can. There it is. So, we got our line goes right to the bell. transpose those measurements over to our door um, the only difference is 
is I've deducted an eighth of an inch. And the reason behind that is, is I want to have an eighth of an inch uh, reveal at the top of the door so it doesn't drag the top of your header. So instead of measuring down eight and a quarter for this first hinge, I measure down eight and one eighth. So that's all you need to do to allow for that, uh, that clearance. And then we got to mount our jig here. And unfortunately, they don't have a centering mark here. So you just kind of have to eyeball it there a little bit. And um, it's not too, it's not like it's that far. So um, usually I can get it on the first try here. If I stop moving it around, maybe. There we go. That looks about right, right about there. change any of the depth settings at all or the router either so myself. I caught myself. I am starting this from the wrong side. We don't want that. That'd be, that would be no bueno. So. This is the side that the hinge goes on. So, we will just go ahead and flip our jig around. At least I caught it before I cut the door. So don't think for a second that just because you're a professional contractor that you don't make mistakes. Because, Lord knows, I have made my fair share of mistakes. Here. Hopefully you can still see. 
see. reach. drills all our holes.
Pepin did not want to come out. Here. Oops. Okay. Okay, so unfortunately, I don't have any light in here in this part of the basement yet, or in this room. So this might be a little difficult for you guys to see. But we're gonna put our door handle. 44 inches. This is right there. And we're going to use our jig to do that. Give me one sec. So, here's how this works. Take this jig and it simply slides over to the door. We just center it like so. And then we got two screws that go in over here. Just like that. And then what we do is we have two bits, uh, two hole saws. And these are, I think this is a two and an eight. Um, yep, two and an eight. So we drill one hole through here, like so. And the other one is a one inch and it goes right in the side. So we drill this one first. So. it from blowing out the other side I like to go from both sides just like that and what that'll do is if you drill straight through like this sometimes when it comes out the other side of the door it'll chip it and um, it doesn't leave a good finish but if you drill through to your pilot hole comes through and then just draw from your other side it gives a nice clean line or a nice clean hole um, I prefer to do that um, technically I guess you don't really have to because it's covered up by a doorknob but I'll know it's there so. and then once you got that board you cut me here Drill 
that out. Just like so. So, now when we take our screws out, <coughs> excuse me, we are left with a perfectly bored door. And I will show you. As soon as my tripod gets out of my way. You know what? I'm just gonna do this. So see we get a nice on this side's nice and clean. Really hard to see. All right, so that's how we do that part. And now we can actually shut the door. But what we need to do is, uh, yeah. So, when we shut the door like this, we need to put our stop material right up in here. Just like something like that. So, now we need to put our stop material in. So, what we do is we shut our door. We're going to get one side pin. I'm only going to pin this with two nails just in case it needs to be adjusted some. When you got it nailed one on one side, all you do is you shut the door. And all I was doing was making sure that the door was closed and flush with the door, with the uh, door frame. Right. So. Now we pin that. I like it. That will work. Always 
good idea to shut the door and look at it from. Oh yeah, that works out good. That works out nice. So now we can install. And what I'm doing is, you guys are probably going to want to measure, but what I am doing is I am lining up my doorstop with the gap here at the hinge. I'm looking at the spacing there at the hinge. And that should, now needs to be adjusted just a touch. But that's why we only do it with a couple couple nails. Oh, damn it. They were pulled all the way out. Oh. how we do a uh, build a door jam um, everything closes good on it our stock material came out good even though I, that was shop made you can certainly go out and buy that from Home Depot it's, it's inexpensive I just had the scrap lumber laying around so our door closes real nice it doesn't rub on anything all our reveals from the other side look good I would take it over there and show you but it's dark and I don't have any lights over there right now. Um, you know, the jam is nice and flush with our finished wall here. So, uh, door opens and closes real nice. The reveal across the bottom is perfect. Um, really, all it needs from here is uh, the door trim, which I'm holding off on because uh, I want to get all the paint work, all the walls painted, and all the spackle work done. Um, prior to putting the trim on, on this one. The pre-hung door, the trim's already attached. So um, with that, I'm gonna have to work around it and, and paint up to it real carefully. But with this, I'll, I'll wait and put the trim up after I'm done painting and give it a beat of caulk, just kind of finish things out and so you don't see any kind of seams at all. And uh, that's how you do a door, door jam. Hang a door, lay out for hinges. It, it's Definitely going to take more time, um, but uh, I think the end result is is much better quality than than you get from a uh, pre-hung door. You may want to say you may say, you know what? I did way too many steps for me. I'm just doing a pre-hung door because it's easy, and there is nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, please by all means leave me some comments. Um, down below if uh, you know you like this video smash that like button um, hit that subscribe button uh, hit that notifications button we got some uh, pretty neat videos coming up um, I'm gonna be doing some antique furniture restorations um, I got a couple I got a thing I got a coffee table I got a dining room table um, that are all all antique um, we're gonna be doing some furniture building 
So I got some live edge slabs and we're going to be doing a flowing river design table with the poured epoxy. So got some things coming up and uh, you know I think they're going to be pretty interesting and you know, I certainly enjoy doing them. So uh, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out and until uh, next time.